Hello, South Bank. Um, and hello, everyone listening from home, which is where I would be were it not for the judges. So I'm very grateful to them and to everyone at the T.S. Eliot, to my wonderful fellow shortlistees and to all of you and to Ian, of course, for making this beautiful night possible. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank my publishers, Carknet Press, and my brilliant, tireless, very patient editor, John McAuliffe. Um, I went to an all-girls Catholic school, and unlike most all-girls Catholic schools, we did not have a twin all-boys Catholic school next door. And so the boys in the um, town next to us fondly referred to our school as the Virgin Megastore. <laughs> the consequence of that for me was that not having any real flesh and blood boys nearby to think about, I fell in love with the boys and men in my history books. Cork Schoolgirl considers the GPO Dublin 2016. I am standing outside the GPO in my school uniform, which isn't ideal. My uniform is the color of bull's blood. In this year, I am 16, a pleasing symmetry, because I love history. Have I told you that? It is mine, so I carry it in my rucksack. I love all the men of history, sacrificing themselves for Ireland, for me, these rebel Jesuses. I put my finger in the building's bullet holes, poke around in its wounds. I wonder if they feel it, those boys. I hope they do. Their blooming faces pressed flat in the pages of my books. I lick the wall as if it were a stamp. It tastes of bones, this smelly city, of those boys in uniforms. Theirs bloody too. I put my lips to the pillar. I want to kiss them all. And I do. I kiss all those boys goodbye. The spine of the book um, is made up of what I call a broken sequence, which is a sequence of poems that is scattered through um, the collection. And this next poem is part of that sequence, and they explore the imagined experiences of Catholic saints and martyrs, exclusively young women, who engaged in extreme behaviors, um, starving themselves, hurting themselves, in order to get closer to Christ, maybe, or to emulate him, or maybe, in fact, to escape their biological fate. Hunger Strikes Columba of Raiti, 1467, to 1501. My body is a temple I keep clean for you, spotless, lashing my skin so it grows tired of bleeding. Wearing hair shirts, I cannot forget what it means to be alert. I have toured the Holy Land in visions. I don't imagine they would understand what I see. When they came for me, the men, they ripped off my robes expecting to find me virginal, untouched. How they gasped in horror. How glad I was that I had used myself like an old rag. Beating myself with that spiked chain shielded me. My breasts and hips so deformed, they ran from me screaming. Uh, when I got married, I had the um, wonderful idea of going on honeymoon and touring the UK, actually, visiting dead poets' graves. <laughs> I am such a catch. In Hepton Stall. 
I find you. It's not a competition. Sprouting tulips, a jar of pens. I lay three daffodils. My new husband kneels to take a photograph. We debate the portent of honeymoon snaps of dead poets' graves. In the picture, the wind messes with my hair. Light makes me squint. On screen, I am already in the past. I apologize to your neighbor, step on his plot to get closer. My husband wisely wanders off. I talk aloud. Resist the weird urge to lie on top of you as if we'd share something else but soil. I don't think we'd have gotten on. I tell you about my wedding, the poems I write on train tickets, on receipts, this poem. I do cry, relieved where you're buried is wild and fierce, that there are red tulips licking your name in metal and stone, hungry. My husband returns, waving a tissue like a white flag. Uh, my father passed away in 2010, and he has been very busy up there, working for everyone in my family since. Um, and for the months and years afterwards, um, and if I'm honest, even still, I get this moment where on the beach or walking down the street or maybe, gosh, in this audience, I see someone and for a minute I think, is that him? Intercession to Saint Anthony. I am on my knees. Find him. Was that his bald head bobbing, a candle flame on my horizon? The scar, a tell, upside down horseshoe with all the luck spilled out. The earth is eating my family up. It practices sucking at the soles of my shoes. I can't resist pressing my fingers into its soil, smearing muck on my face, war paint. But I'm a loser. My father died when I wasn't looking. Careless, I've mislaid my keys again. I buzz around a stupid blue bottle bouncing off walls. Where are they? Where is he? I hit my head on a shelf. I swear I have left my body and then you let me see, Saint Anthony. I'm broke from you and now a gift given back a missing leopard print sock, the lost gold earring, my keys, and now his clear white bones licked clean, burning the ground. I get up, the scar dissolved, the candle quenched, there, there he is. And um, it's just been such a thrill and such a joy to be here. And you're just a gorgeous audience. Um, and I just want to read one more poem for you. And I can't wait to hear the rest of the wonderful readers this evening. Selfie. Sitting alone in the house, eating my fingernails, watching the sky move away. The room is full. Versions of me crouching on the floor, balancing on the windowsill, reclining on the pout of my upper lip, asleep in the crease of my eyelid. Not alone, with myself, a snare I have been running from. I do not live the way humans are supposed to. Compare my face to others you know. I fall short an embarrassing fringe. No matter what face I try on, it's exhausting. All versions shake our heads. There is much to do until we think we are not what we are. Victorias. I see those letters written on envelopes I know are for me because of the shape of that word, that greedy V. It's two arms open wide, ready to accept anything.
Thank you so much.